Hey there everyone and welcome to the JavaScript course. Now, I'm a kind of a person who always like to get started by installing the things and writing some code. I love that. But this time JavaScript requires a little bit of the theoretical basics so that we can understand what things we are learning, how powerful it is and where they can be applied. So we're going to be answering three base questions here. First and foremost, what is JavaScript and where it can be applied? The second important question is what's the difference between Java and JavaScript? And yes, we are still doing that question. And the third thing is what is this ES6, ES7, ECMAScript? These are the terms which every new beginner hears quite a lot, but don't even have a single thought about what actually it means and why it is being taught quite a lot with JavaScript. So first, let's get started with JavaScript. Now, it amuses me a little bit when I asked any experienced programmer who has been working quite a lot but haven't touched the JavaScript or hasn't been involved in the JavaScript news lately. And he just says, it's just a client language, client side language. And although he's technically totally correct, but that's not it. JavaScript can be and is a lot more than what it used to be. JavaScript was designed simply to run in browser, but it is doing a lot more uh, than the time that you have the memory of that. Now, even the definition on the Wikipedia is a little bit vague and honestly, it's a little bit hard to understand. It just says JavaScript often abbreviated as JSL high level interpreted programming language. And further, it says it is also characterized by dynamic, weakly typed, prototype based. All these things are true, but it doesn't give you any sense of what JavaScript is and what it can actually do. Now, I do completely agree here that JavaScript is a client side language and was totally used in the browser for performing variety of web based things in the past. But after that, JavaScript has evolved a lot. Now, in the previous days, if we had to talk a little bit about the server, what we used to do is we wrapped our SQL query, we packed them into the PHP. And since PHP, Python and Ruby are the languages which are server side languages and only are capable to talk to the server. We used to wrap these queries and send to the server and then get a result back in the PHP and just display that onto the web page. Now, yes, that's totally true, but now your JavaScript can do all these things as well. Now, the next question that comes up is if I'll be writing all these codes in JavaScript and since JavaScript is a client side language and usually all of that code is submitted to the client as well. No, it doesn't. JavaScript has evolved a lot from the memory that you have. Now, all of your JavaScript code that you write, it's your choice totally that the, whether this code should uh, reach to the client side or it should only serve onto the server. A quick example could be Node.js, an entire web server framework or entire thing which can handle all of your server side things. And yes, totally in JavaScript. So for that, I have to give you a little bit examples of what are the capabilities of this JavaScript. First and foremost, Node.js, like it's a entire thing, entire package, which can deal up like everything in the server side. You can write your queries, uh, you can handle all the tasks that you, you were able to do in PHP or Ruby or Python or any other language. It can serve as a totally server side language as well. And without a doubt, I am pretty sure that you might have heard about the Node.js and it's rising in its popularity. And that's just one thing. So if you'll ask me, hey, it can do like web thing from the front side and back side, that's it? No, it's not. JavaScript is evolving a lot and you might have heard about the project known as React. And using React.js, you can design your application, just one single code base, and that can run onto a mobile as well as an iOS, Android, web. There is React native too, so it's, it's popular there. Of course, we cannot deny the popularity of AngularJS, your one framework for mobile and desktop, just like almost React, but few additional things, few less things here and there. But again, uh, regardless of that, you might have heard about it. And also the, the popular framework, which is getting really good popularity nowadays is ElectronJS. Again, totally designed to make desktop application in just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's gaining a lot of popularities here. And on top of that, Vue.js, a beautiful progressive JavaScript framework, which can help you to design beautiful and amazing animations for the web, totally in that. Now, just to extend the things onto much for further level, these two examples are gonna give you extensive detail that how JavaScript is gaining its popularity and how is it becoming popular every single day. So notice the one here which says React VR. Yes, you can design your total virtual reality experience in in simple JavaScript. And yes, that is. And also recent announcement of the TensorFlow JS proves the popularity of the JavaScript that yes, 
even the machine learning task will soon be able to perform in just JavaScript. Now, as of now, we are totally relied on either Python or R in machine learning, but now it can be JavaScript as well. And very soon you're gonna be seeing that. And yes, all of this is totally possible in JavaScript, but not the JavaScript that you have memories or you have heard about in those old books or maybe old college curriculums. JavaScript has evolved a lot. Now this brings us to the next question, which still we are doing is what's the difference between JavaScript and Java? Now this was probably the worst decision uh, that JavaScript ever made to name it after Java. And yes, at that time of the uh, at that time of the period, JavaScript was, Java was having a, so much popularity that uh, it dominated. And the decision was so poor that the language got introduced in 1995. And still we are making it, it's 2018 is almost gone. And we are still making the videos on Java versus JavaScript. The similarity is similar to this example here. What is the similarity between a car and a carpet? Yes, exactly, no similarities at all, apart from the word car is included in the carpet. It doesn't have an engine, carpet doesn't have an engine, it doesn't have a wheels or anything like that, but still car and carpet are similar in saying, and that's exactly what it is in Java and JavaScript. No similarity at all. There is no dependence of, of Java into JavaScript or JavaScript into Java. It probably was the worst decision of naming it after. And from 1995, still we are making videos and textbook and writing this that, hey, there has nothing to do it at all. And probably for the next few years, we are gonna be still doing it. Now, the next big question is what is ES6 or ECMAScript? Now, this ECMAScript is kind of a standardization. Now, in 1995, uh, Netscape actually created the JavaScript. And onto a very sidebar here that reminds me here uh, is JavaScript is a really uh, old language in 1995. And that time of period, uh, programmers were really obsessed with naming everything after coffee. And that eventually came as JavaScript. It, this project was actually created on the name of Mocha. Yes, programmers were so obsessed with naming everything after coffee. Then it came on to LiveScript and then finally it got changed into JavaScript. So in 1995, the Netscape actually started to working on a project, named it a JavaScript finally, and released that. Now after that, soon people realized that we need a standardization over this language so that not every browser can manipulate it based on their needs. So this European Computer Manufacturer Association uh, came out and declared a standardization for it, known as ES1 in 1997. And soon after that, the ES2, ES3, and all of that came around. And in 2009 or 10-ish, uh, ES5 came up with a few good new features, uh, which are map and for each. And by the way, I just missed that I have actually replicated in 2009 and 10 twice, but it's not. So in 2009 and 10, the new features like map and for each things came up. At initial level, JavaScript didn't have the concept of even the classes and objects, but now we have all of them. So in 2015, uh, ES6 actually came up, and in 2017, the ES7 came up. And now already we are having specs of ES8 as well, and there are a lot of new features included. Now, these are the new features, obviously, but you don't have to worry anything about them at all. The things that you're gonna be learning in the JavaScript are completely applicable. Obviously, there will be more version, and that doesn't mean that the previous things are gonna be gone. No, they are not. It's just only about adding a few new features that you can have in language, and that's pretty much it. You, all the language, all the things that you're gonna be learning in this course are completely applicable even to the newer version as well. And there will be just few new features that you can pick up on the go and can work with that. Now also there is a good resource here onto the GitHub, uh, which you can find out and can know about which browsers are supporting which version of it and what parameters and what options they are searching for that. This is totally for the advanced users who have been designing the web for a long time and have to worry about a lot of things, like which browser support is gonna be there or not. So this is a nice resource, I found it, and you can just have a look at it. In case it doesn't really make sense to you, totally ignore it, no problem at all. And it has versions for ES5 and ES6, like what browsers are supported, uh, what are not supported, what features you can use, what you cannot, but for the rest of the people, just completely ignore that. Okay, so this is finally covered, that these are the basics that everybody should know with what is JavaScript, ES6, Java versus JavaScript, and all these things. So that's pretty much it. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about what are the tools that we require 
in order to perform all the operations and the code for this particular course. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you enough options so that you can just work around on any computer at all. So that's it, and I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video.